All right, hey. <laughs> so, unusual opening, but, um, you know, it's different. Got my sun hat off, I'll take that off for now. Just gonna do a quick um, 11 month update. It has been 11 months and post-op and uh, life is completely different and it's hard to explain. So uh, recapping what I usually recap. Uh, I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy surgery on Jan oops, June, July, whoa, July 16th, 2020. So my high weight two weeks before surgery, this would have been on July 2nd, uh, was 310 pounds. Uh, 310 and a half to be precise. My weight on surgery day on uh, July 16th was 300 pounds. And today we are partying like it's 1999. Why? Because I weighed in at 199.9 pounds. 1999. We're partying like it's 1999. Now, so that's... Uh, 110.6 pounds lost since July 2nd of 2020. And um, obviously just over 100 pounds lost since surgery in 11 months. Now, um, getting to Wonderland was not really a specific goal of mine. I set a goal of um, getting my relative fat mass down to 20% or lower. And I am at that, uh, which is totally normal for my sex and age and all that kind of stuff. But I have to admit, seeing the one on the end of that was pretty darn cool. It was pretty cool, I have to admit. Uh, whether I stay there or not, I don't know. I don't care that much. Uh, I really do feel like I'm in uh, sort of a maintenance mode at this point and not really uh, going for weight loss. Um, I may lose some more weight, but um, I'm more of in a mindset of maintaining what I've gotten, which has been amazing. Uh, my life is a, a thousand percent different than it was uh, 11 months ago. And I have, yeah, so we're closing in on a year, not too long from now, it'll be a whole year. and. Um, We'll, we'll do a special episode then, for sure. But um, thanks for those of you who kind of been hanging around for the last few months watching this thing. It's going to keep on going. Uh, I'm going to continue to track this. I think it's important to see that people can be successful and maintain this loss. And that's my plan, is to maintain the loss, um, not have to do um, anything other than monitor my food now. And it is all about food, in my opinion. I think it is 100%. This battle with obesity, obesity is won or lost in the kitchen, not in the gym, you know, not with a super special diet, but a reasonable diet, uh, with nothing necessarily off limits, but done right. And I plan on living just a great life. I love the way I eat now. I love. Uh, everything I'm doing with food and you'll know if you saw the last couple of videos that I posted about the test I'm doing with the Zoe method the Zoe test uh, testing the microbiome and all of that I'm gonna be um, adding another v v blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna be adding another video here um, within the next day or two that I'm gonna record probably this evening uh, about that first week it's been fascinating and I'm gonna be following that on through to the end. Now I've got about a week left of testing and experiments and I'm wearing the blood sugar monitor there, which has been really, really cool. And um, about six weeks after that ends, I'll be getting my test results and uh, recommended foods for um, maintaining a really healthy microbiome. And I can't stress enough how much I believe the healthy gut plays a part in long-term success. I really think it's key. 
It's key to mental health. It's key to body health. It's key to immunity. It's so important. And the research has been coming up out in the last five to 10 years, especially within the last five, is just blowing up around the microbiome. And um, it's really showing us a lot of things that you know, the food industry has been essentially lying to us about with um, a calorie being a calorie. While, you know, um, it is true, but we don't process food the same way from person to person. A calorie is a calorie as far as this form of measurement, but 130 calories for this person for, say, a serving of almonds is not 130 calories worth of energy for the next person. It could be as low as 60, it could be high as 180, all for the same amount of almonds. And that can go for almost any kind of food. And that makes a lot of difference over the course of a week, right? So it's those kind of things that we're learning about how individuals process stuff and um, process food and that every individual is unique. And you can follow any diet religion, whether that's keto or paleo or Mediterranean or vegetarian, vegan, whatever have you, uh, nothing wrong with any of those if they work for you and you can sustain them and keep them going for the long term. And I think that also is key. You have to have a diet that you can sustain for the long term or else you're going to go back into old patterns. You got to find out what's right for you. Uh, this surgery is not just about having a smaller stomach and eating less. It's about eating the right foods from here on out. So that's all I'm going to do with this update. We're closing in on a 10-minute video. I want to keep it short. We will be, I will, we will, I will, uh, be uploading, like I said, an update on the Zoe method that's going to go over that first week. I've got some charts and graphs, comparisons on food. It's pretty fascinating stuff. So I'm looking forward to sharing that. And then again, at the end of week number two, I'll do something similar. And um, we'll go from there. And again, thanks for stopping by. Um, and until next time, take care.